Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments in God's word. Thank you again for joining me today as we continue what we began on yesterday, and that is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A very familiar story. You've heard it all your life if you've been in church or Sunday school. This is a very favorite uh, story that all of us love to hear, and it has so many profound truths. And the profound truth that we're learning this week is that there's no success without testing. Yesterday, we looked at the last verse where it says that the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's verse 30. But the promotion did not come until after they were willing to experience some test. And always test comes before promotion. You're going to go through some things before you get where God wants you to be. Now, let's look now at the test. Yesterday, we saw how they got promoted. Let's look at the test they had to be willing to endure. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, says this. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high, 6 cubits wide, set it up on the plains of Dura uh, in the province of Babylon. So he makes this, this golden image. And the golden image was a golden image of himself. That is very important that he's making a golden image of himself. Look at verse two. He then summons his satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial office officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the, sat tra the satraps, Prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Look at verse 4. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations to people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, Scyther, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music. You must fall down and worship the image of gold that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship, here's the incentive, whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zyre, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music of all the nations, all the nations and people of every language fell down and worshiped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, okay, is the most powerful king in the world, without question. Babylon is the, is the superpower of the day. And so he sets up this golden image. He's got unlimited power. And, you know, with unlimited power comes ego. He's got a humongous ego. And he was very insecure because his country was made up of different ethnic groups who had their own ethnic distinctives. How, how do you bring diversity? How do you bring unity amidst all this diversity? Well, he brought unity through patriotism. He said, uh, you can still be a Jew if you want to be a Jew. You can still be a Phoenician if you want to be a Phoenician. You can still be an Assyrian if you want to be an Assyrian. You can still be an Egyptian if you want to be an Egyptian. Uh, but you can maintain some cultural distinctiveness. But I want you to have this one thing in common, and that is that you see me basically fundamentally as God. That's what he's saying. And so he has a tremendous ego because with unlimited power, there comes often tremendous ego. Someone said, you've heard the saying that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, this king is absolutely corrupt because he has uh, unchecked, unfettered, unlimited power. So he builds this image of himself to be worshipped. Now you say, well, well, that's back then. What does that have to do with today? Well, in a sense, all of us are somewhat like Nebuchadnezzar because he built an image of himself that he wanted worshipped. And in our society, guess what we like to project? We like to project image. 
We want to image ourselves so we have image consultants. He, he wanted to image himself as God. We wanted to image ourselves as successful, as important. Uh, we, we create certain images. Why do we move into certain homes? Why do we drive certain cars? Why do we wear certain clothes? It's not because less expensive clothes cannot do the job or a less expensive car cannot do the job or a less expensive home cannot do the job. But baby, when you got an image, you got to keep up like Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> you want people to look at you in a certain way. And this is what is going on. He wants to project a certain image like you and I want to project a certain image. And we want people to see us in a particular way. Now, he said, when you hear the music, I want you to bow down and worship my image. Now, we don't have those type of gods, idols that we worship. But we do have images that we worship or people that are larger than life. For example, we we worship sports, um, sports teams. Uh, some people, their whole emotions um, becomes deflated when their favorite sports team does not win the, the, the football game or the basketball game, especially if they lose to a rival. They can go into a serious depression because we worship at the altar of sports heroes, our entertainers, our religious leaders. Some people will fight you uh, over their religious leader, their pastor or whoever, their spiritual leader. They, they, they worship, they fall down and worship thought leaders and re religious leaders and political leaders. So therefore, if you're a Republican, you will die for Trump. Or if you're a Democrat, you will die uh, for Biden because you worship images. And Nebuchadnezzar wanted people to worship him the same way we worship. We still have that same propensity to worship uh, uh, certain images. And you know what? Satan really doesn't mind you worshiping just as long as you don't worship the true and living God. Satan knows you're going to worship something, so he's going to put some God substitute in there for you to worship. He just doesn't want you to worship the true living God, the God of justice, because you always become like that which you worship. Now, now what's interesting is that the king said, when you hear the sound of the music, everybody stop what you're doing and worship me. Which means anytime the music plays, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You can be eating, but if you're eating, you hear the sound of the music, stop eating. Uh, you can be using the restroom. You use the restroom. Stop using the restroom. It's time to get down on your knees and start worshiping. In other words, he wanted the whole world to revolve around him. And you know that you've got an ego issue when you think that the whole world should revolve around you. Now, he incentivized them to do this by saying that if you don't worship me, here's the stick and the carrot motivation. And that is, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. Now, this is not a furnace in which you just bake biscuits, baby. You just don't bake cakes in these furnaces. This is a big, a big, big, big furnace where you melt iron, if you will. I mean, it's 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 huge. And he says, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace if you don't worship me. And so, guess what? The music starts playing. The Babylonian Philharmonic Orchestra starts playing. And as soon as the Philharmonic Orchestra started playing, what you could see, maybe some people were at the mall, maybe some people were at the beauty shop, maybe they were at the barber shop, or maybe they were in the grocery store, if I could contemporize it. But when all that music started and they were being piped in through the sound system, guess what happened? Everybody hit the dirt. Pop, 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 pop. You can just see the dirt rising in the air as everybody hit the dirt. Everybody except three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They would not bow down to the golden idol. And the reason they would not bow down to the golden idol was because they'd be breaking two of the first commandments. And the first commandment says, you shall not worship any other God but me. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 5, you shall not worship any God before me. And the second commandment is, you shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or earth beneath or in the waters. You shall not bow down or to them or worship them. 
because they were men of conviction and not men of convenience. They could not bow down and worship the golden idol. And there were some people who noticed that they were not worshiping. They were their co-workers. These men, although they were Jews, had been elevated in Babylonian society and in Babylonian politics. They were men of authority and they had people who worked with them who were Babylonians who were jealous of these, these Jewish boys. So guess what the co-workers do? They go and tell the king, king, we've got some Jews. They're appealing to racism. They're racist. They're appealing to bigotry. We have some Jews who will not comply to your command. And you put these Jews in positions of power and authority. They will not bow down. So here you here you have it. In this story, you have the king. He has the image. He's stuck up. He's stuck up. The king is stuck up. He has the image. You have the co-workers who go into the king and say, oh, live forever, great king. We love you, great king, but we got a problem. There are some men who are Jews who won't bow down and worship. So while the king is stuck up, the co-workers kiss up. You have a whole lot of people who will kiss up just in order to be advanced. But the Hebrew boys stood up. When everyone else was bowing down, they stood up because they were not men of convenience. They were men of conviction. And because of that, they're going to be tested. And when you have convictions and not just convenience, expect to be tested because there's no success without a test. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow and see what happens. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and help us to be people of convictions, trusting you, knowing that the, our ultimate destiny is in no one's hands but yours. If there's someone who's listening who feels like they have to compromise, help them know that they don't. Help them to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining me with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Uh, email us, newstart at ssclive.org, and we shall get back with you. Peace and blessings to you. And uh, we'll pick up on this again tomorrow, this theme, no success without a test. But until then, during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we are still in, don't forget to stay safe, wear your mask, get vaccinated, stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.